Hi everyone. So today we are doing a session where we take the most common questions that are asked by the students, and uh, let's try to answer. Let's see what Sanjeev's perspective is, and uh, we'll try to elaborate some points on it. So, the, Sanjeev, welcome to the program. So, one of the questions uh, that is most common is, what are the technologies that students should focus for DevOps in 2025? What are the changes coming in the industry? What should the what should everybody focus on for in terms of DevOps? So, Rudy, great if you can just share yeah. your thoughts. Sure, sure, sort of. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I I was thinking about this. A lot of time, students reach out to me uh, asking, "What is the future of DevOps? What is going to happen in future in this industry if we spend some time now?" How relevant is it going to be? So a lot of questions will be answered through this uh, talk in the next few minutes. So just watch it till the end. There are uh, five or six points that I have tried to uh, brought because based on my experience. So some of the changes or things that people should focus on uh, or how industry is changing is uh, there is a lot of uh, blurry lines between different roles. That's something we all have to accept first of all. Uh, a DevOps engineer is not just uh, a developer kind of role or uh, they are managing the production infrastructure. They are uh, they are talking to the security teams. They are talking to the customers. They are responsible for many aspects in the organization. Uh, they need to know a lot of good practices of managing the cloud, so which an architect used to be responsible for. So that lines are... Uh, getting very blurred between different roles. So for anybody who is architect, they need to know how to code, how to set up infrastructure using uh, using code. Similarly, for cloud engineers or DevOps engineers, they are expected to know a lot of best practices. So this, this change will, will continue and you would have to always learn, relearn, uh, forget some of the things that were not relevant in the past and now now which, which whichever is the new things are coming you have to keep reinventing yourself so that that has to continue because it's an it's an ever changing uh, field uh, <clears throat> talking more about those best practices uh, i have mentioned in multiple of my uh, talks that learning devops and cloud is actually very easy implementing it is difficult uh, you can do the same thing in cloud in multiple ways. So what will you need to do over the next few years is to learn which is the best way to do it, not just one of the way to do it. So when you are transferring data to your customers, how you securing your infrastructure, uh, all those things, you can actually do it in multiple ways. There would be one right way to do it for your organization. So try to find out best practices of all the relevant tools, the entire uh, the the entire AWS Azure whatever is your cloud platform uh, of choice so best practices of doing certain things in cloud so that has to be uh, something you have to learn not just basic knowledge security is anyway always going to be uh, the number one uh, aspect in in any uh, cloud or DevOps operations uh, you cannot have your credential lying in your repositories or your secrets uh, here and there or your uh, buckets being public or your instances having public IP addresses. All those uh, security aspects have to be considered, how you can build a zero trust model and how you can ensure a visibility of your entire environment at a large scale. That, that aspect have, always have to be focused on. So whatever you are learning, make sure how you are learning uh, is, is that, are you considering security in, into, the, into your learning or not? So whatever tool you are focusing on. <clears throat> Now, next are the two most important things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, what we have seen over the last few years that a lot of companies are migrating to cloud. Now that shift is coming to like a, a more of a stagnation where most of the companies have already started some sort of operations in cloud, uh, whether it's uh, large enterprises or, or startups. So uh, migrating to cloud is getting a bit of older, uh, uh, 2016, 18, even 2020, kind of uh, DevOps and cloud responsibilities. Now, managing in the cloud is getting more popular. So are you able to manage production infrastructure, the operations uh, in the cloud? So look at operations kind of activities in the cloud. So monitoring, observability, being able to trace the entire transactions. So 
while you are a devops and cloud engineer uh, you will be asked to understand different errors in the environment based on those errors uh, how do you make changes to the product or what changes do you suggest as a cloud engineer to the application team so those aspects will be um, uh, another good focus uh, for next few years are you able to manage create that visibility of your infrastructure and applications in cloud and the most important thing the the ai ml and data uh, side of it that would be the biggest revolution so i have seen most of the devops and cloud engineer after a while they get into data science or data related projects managing data for their customers so that shift has to continue that will continue in one way or the other so whether you are 2025 target or targeting 20 next few years you need to know uh, how those uh, AI models can be created, how they can be consumed, how you can manage CICD for those uh, models in your organization, how you can uh, create data lake. So companies are generating a lot of data in their different applications, different environments. They want to consolidate that data and then uh, whatever we used to do in the data warehouse, uh, every that same sort of data warehouse they are setting up in their cloud and then create generative, use generative AI or any such uh, machine learning models to create meaningful information for their customers. So that something is going to be another uh, two or three years down the line, something a good roadmap for everybody to focus on. Now, all these things that I talked about, five different things, uh i talked about are only possible if you already know basics of devops and cloud already so that those are the things that that are the advancements so you are always going to be expected that the basic devops and cloud concepts are clear to you then you move on to um, the operations in cloud the managing the data in cloud and security of a large scale infrastructure in cloud uh, the best practices in the cloud. So all those things are possible if you are already covering the uh, the basic concepts, etc. That that's what I am assuming, and uh, that's something I feel sort of is, is a good roadmap for somebody who is targeting next four five years. Uh, starts with these basic DevOps and cloud things that you should know already, and then focus on these five points that uh, that I talked. About. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you, Sanjeev. So I think that was very elaborate and. Uh... Lots of different points have been covered. So you talked about serverless, you talked about uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, low code, no code. And uh, you also talked about a lot of things that uh, the new tech stack is coming up. But saying that, as you mentioned, it's very important to have the underlying basic concepts and fundamentals at, at their place before the students can start. Thank Absolutely. you, Sanjay. Thank you.